Hey there, QT. Welcome to my Q2 tutorial. Two, 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 tutor my Q2 tutorial. Ha! <laughs> that one practically made itself. Functionally and aesthetically, it's much different from the original Q, but troubleshooting steps remain the same. So if you've got a problem with installing or connection, or if something just isn't working right, check out the video in the description and hopefully that'll fix your problems. Now, let's start with this home page that'll show you all the peripherals you probably don't own. To disable the demos, go and click the little cogwheel up top, then check off the box that says Show Only Connected Devices. Or, you can leave them up to explore and be tempted to buy things that shine brighter than my future. Which is probably what Corsair intended anyway, so there's that. You can go back to the home screen by clicking on the Corsair Gaming logo up top. Clicking this banner down here will bring you to the latest Q2 news. A little further down, you'll run into Corsair's social media, just in case you decide to tweet them about your spankin' new keyboard. Back to the settings cogwheel, I'm only going to show connected devices for simplicity's sake, but you can see general information here like battery life for wireless peripherals, brightness, and a button for updating firmware. In the box down below, you can set language, determine whether you want Q to launch at system startup or not, or enable the software development kit. Lastly, you can check for software updates, but this hardly ever works when I hit it, so your best bet is probably just reinstalling every once in a while. We'll hop right into the lighting effects next, since I imagine that's what most of you RGB junkies are interested in. To edit your RGB devices, click on your peripheral up top. Click the lighting effects at the side and click on the plus button to add a layer. For single effects, we have Spiral Rainbow, famous for being in every RGB device ever and Rainbow Wave, which is, unsurprisingly, a wave of rainbow, both of which allow you to control speed and direction to some extent. In fact, virtually every effect allows you to adjust speed in steps of slow, medium, or fast, and a majority of other effects allow for random colors or alternating between two of your choice, selectable via a color wheel and or by punching in them digits. So I won't bother mentioning them from this point on. The next effect is Visor, wax on, wax off. Then we have rain, slippery when wet. After that, we've got color shift, which is pretty self-explanatory, followed by color pulse, which is more of an in and out fade than an actual pulse, but that's okay. Color wave vaguely reminds me of my high school pep rallies. And static color is the most boring, but also probably the most staple of them all. The more exciting lighting effects are type lighting key and ripple, where your keyboard reacts to your touch. Unlike my ex. I am unable to demo the pair of void visualizers because I don't own one of Corsair's RGB headsets, but those basically synchronize your LEDs to the audio going through the void. The last option here is Lighting Link, which will synchronize all of your Corsair RGB peripherals with either the Spiral Rainbow, Rainbow Wave, Visor, Rain, Color Shift, Color Pulse, Color Wave, or type lighting ripple effects. But wait, there's more! Like onions and ogres, Q2 comes in layers, if you abuse this plus button. Just like working in Photoshop or working on your fourth grade art collage project, the topmost layer covers everything below it. Any LEDs that are represented as off on the top layer will simply reveal the layer below it. So you can get a much deeper combination of effects, like this static WASD key effect over this type lighting effect, over this visor effect, over this rain effect, over this rainbow wave effect. To set multiple static colors, create one layer and select keys by either clicking keys one at a time, clicking and dragging, or holding control and selecting one or more keys. Once you've got your keys, you can adjust the color settings below to set your selection. To create a second color, create a second layer and repeat. Clicking on the two slices of bread lets you duplicate your selected layer. The magnifying glass lets you search through your effect layers and the trash can gives you compliments on command. The switch at the left here toggles layers on or off. You can click and drag layers to reorder them, and you can rename your layers for faster reference if you like having a bajillion options. You can make a ridiculous amount of layers to suit whatever RGB craze you may have, except for one. One big gripe I have with this software is that you can't combine the lighting link effect, which synchronizes your Corsair peripherals, with any other effect. Enabling this one disables everything else, and that's just Q bad. This button up here allows for advanced lighting controls. Click the plus button like we did before, and you get... Static. 
This isn't much different from our previous static effect, but if you click this dropdown, we see other options. Starting with the gradient, we see this big box. Go ahead and select some keys and click the plus button to the bottom left of the box to add a keyframe. It's pretty boring right now, but we can fix that. Click the plus button again for another keyframe. Click on it to make it active, then drag it around, change the color, add more keyframes, and see what happens. The lighting time section displays the time it takes for the full effect to cycle. It's set to 10 seconds by default, but you can adjust that to suit your preferences. You'll also notice that you can control when the effect starts and ends. With profile, means it'll start as soon as the profile loads, and on key pressed means it'll trigger like our type lighting effects from earlier. Selecting the letter option opens up another checkbox to play on pressed key, which means only the key you hit will display the lighting effect. The stop option is exactly as it sounds, stopping the effect after a certain amount of iterations, when the key is pressed again, when it is released, or never. The next effect is ripple. Make your selection, add your keyframes, change up your colors and lighting times, fiddle with your start and stop options, and note the tail and velocity options. Tail will determine the length of the ripple by number of lights, and velocity controls how fast the ripple travels in keys per second. The next effect is a solid one, with options similar to gradient. Adding a keyframe here actually inserts two of them, and they dynamically adjust to each other. Adjusting them vertically effectively changes their opacity, which can also be done with this here outer ring. And adding more keyframes just adds more solid colors in. The last effect is Wave, where we see lots of familiar options, plus a field for degrees and a checkbox for two sides. Degrees obviously changes the light's angle of attack, keeping it at zero moves it from left to right, changing it to 180 reverses the direction, an angle of 90 will go from down to up, and an angle of 270 will go from up to down. Try it out! You can even do an acute angle if you wanted. And then checking off two sides pretty much means the wave spreads from the middle out instead of side to side. Now that we've made the second ugliest color scheme in the world, I'm sure you're all wondering about the icing on the rainbow cake. To fix this abomination, click on performance. Here we see a color wheel you can use to fix the lock and brightness indicator colors. Much better. You also have some control over what the Windows lock key does with these checkboxes. Under actions is where you'll find macro settings. Click the plus button to add an action. The default here is macro, where you can start recording by clicking this bottom red circle. Depending on what you leave checked under record settings, you can grab delays, keystrokes, mouse clicks, the scroll wheel, and even mouse movement. If you mess up during your recording, you can fine tune your options with the buttons on the right of the event box. Adding a new event allows you to fill in anything you've missed if you happen to be inaccurate with your initial recording. You can click events to highlight and edit them. Once you've added or edited your event, click done to apply it. There are buttons for adding and removing delays, Copy, paste, and undo will work as expected, and you can even affect your actions with typical keyboard commands like Control A, Control C, Control V, and Delete. Alternatively, there are buttons to delete selected or all events. The racing flag here will give you options to trigger certain lighting effects that you've created earlier, or play sounds when your macro is activated. Or both! Lastly, the wrench and screwdriver gives you some final settings that let you fine tune the execution of the macro. You can trigger it on key press, on key release, only when the key is being held down, or toggle it, meaning that the macro starts when you hit it and doesn't stop until you hit it again. Execute uninterrupted means once your macro starts, you're committed. Action repeat is what you'd imagine it to be, allowing the option for adding a delay between cycles, and second action will trigger another macro you set up after the first finishes. Apply this macro to a button by clicking on one of the keys on your virtual rainbow barf, and you'll see that the icon next to the action name indicates what it belongs to. You'll also note that the key itself adopted a little yellow triangle to show that it's taken. To unpair these two, simply click the key again. The next action in the list is text, which will basically output some predefined characters. You can opt to add a delay between each character, trigger lighting and sound effects, and include a second action just like earlier. Remap key just changes one of your keys or mouse buttons to another. You can change the activation from a keystroke to a mouse click, and you can also remap a key to a short combination of keys like Control alt shift v and Control shift escape and whatever else you may or may not want. Some of the key functions allow for an imitation of holding the key for an amount of time determined by you, or you can toggle the key being pretend held. 
The next option is remapping media keys, also featuring this race flag menu for triggering sound and lighting effects. After that, we have launch application, which is fairly self-explanatory, I think. Following on through, we have the timer action, which has some familiar settings and some otherwise straightforward ones, like whether the timer starts on key press or key release, if the timer should repeat or have any delays, if the timer should restart if you press the key again, etc. You can even combine the timer action with another one of your macros so that they activate or stop simultaneously under the checker flag and stopwatch menus respectively. The next action we have is exactly not an action. In fact, it tells whatever key you set it to, no. It basically says that key won't work anymore, but you can also set that key to be active as long as the Windows lock key is not enabled, just in case the normal lock functions don't cut it for you. The last action is profile switching, which we will talk more about shortly. If switching mode is set to switch to next profile from list, the left box shows what profiles your key will swap to. Moving it to the other box removes it from the rotation. You also have a checkbox for looping the list. Once you select which key you want to swap your profiles, you can also assign that same key to do the same for all other profiles by replacing whatever action may already exist there. You can change the mode to automatically switch to a particular profile of your choice, with the option of only being on that profile as long as the key is held down. The last mode is pretty much the first mode backwards, allowing you to move to the previous profile in the list instead of the next. Now let's say you've perfected this profile. But now you've got another game you want to play, and you want another perfect profile. Come on up to the hamburger button and click on the plus sign or the double slice bread icon to add a new profile, or copy your active one respectively. This button with the 69ing arrows lets you export or import profiles, which can be found on Corsair's RGB share site, linked in the description below. Even easier than that, you can click on the Astrojax button here to see popular profiles done by other people, which kind of makes me not want to link Corsair's RGB share site in the description down below. Adding them is as easy as ticking a checkbox and clicking on import. Note that some may not work depending on your device, but you can filter those results with a drop down menu to the right. Also make sure the advanced setting is appropriately toggled. The icon that looks like a super chubby raised hand is for saving the static lighting, not advanced lighting, to your device's onboard memory. This does not carry over macros or fancy lighting effects, but Corsair's K95 RGB Platinum keyboard should be able to support this when it finally comes in stock. The ice skating pencil allows you to edit the profile name, icon, tab transparency, and background image in the queue software, and link it to a program, which will cause it to activate once your specified program launches. Setting up your default profile is as easy as choosing the one you want to start with and dragging it over to the far left side. Congratulations! That is the entirety of my Q2 knowledge. Some things to note if you're running into issues, double check on your advanced toggle up top if something doesn't look right, be sure you know which static lighting effect you save to the keyboard if your default profile doesn't appear to be displaying properly, double check your layer order if your colors are not coming out as you would expect, and watch the troubleshooting video linked in the description for all other grievances. You know the drill by now, like, dislike, are you curious about something? Shoot me a message or toss me something in my comments and I'll get to ya. Thanks for watching, my name is Steven, and unlike Corsair's RGB army, I am a little dim. Bye bye.